Coming up on Knicks Fan TV, Kyrie Irving drops a bombshell on the Cleveland Cavaliers, and he's listed the Knicks as a trade destination. But should the Knicks really part with their future to get Kyrie and Broadway? Knicks Fan TV. Seems like every week the Knicks rumors get better and better. This time Kyrie Irving drops a bomb on the Cavaliers. He wants to leave Cleveland and listed the Knicks as a potential landing point. Knicks Nation has been in an uproar all Friday. Knicks Twitter is going crazy. But Jedi, obviously for a Kyrie Irving deal, we're gonna have to give up some pieces, man. Obviously Melo would have to be in a deal. But you're talking about some of your, your bright future, potentially Frank, potentially some first round picks. Would you do this deal if, if that's what it required? I mean, let's recap real quick. So news today drops that Kyrie Irving has requested a trade from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Supposedly this happened a few weeks ago or last week, whatever the case may be. He told them, and this is sourcer, sources, uh, uh, Kyrie has not come out publicly and made a statement nor has his agent but he said he um what was translated to us per sources was that he wanted to no longer play with lebron james and he wanted to go to a team where he would be the main focal point point. and see i take that as him basically knowing that lebron is out of there after this next season like he's out of there so those lakers rumors could be true man it's crazy lebron is literally literally shifting everybody's destinations uh, indirectly changing where everybody wants to go i think that's a ballsy move on his part regardless if he thinks that if lebron's gonna go to la or whatever preferred destination he ends up next year if he decides to opt out of his deal this is something we obviously have to look at i'm not willing to send them carmelo anthony assets Despite how those assets, when we traded back for Carmelo Anthony, turned out to be, I wouldn't give up that many. I would go as far as obviously trade. We have leverage because Melo wants to leave, and Cleveland is one of his preferred trade destinations. Right, but Cleveland uh, doesn't have to trade Kyrie. Remember that he's on the contract till 2019. So they we, don't. We they don't have, have to pony up for him. My thing is, we we can't give up these young pieces and go back down that road again, man. You see where that got us with Melo, man. This is, oh, this I'm, is, I agree. This is a league where you have to almost get lucky when you bottom out and try to draft that game-changing player or players that can really take your team to the next level. We give up a Frank, maybe a 2019, a 2021 pick. It's just going back down that, mel that, that same road with Melo. I'm not asking to throw the house at, at Cleveland in order to obtain Kyrie. I don't, I don't think that should be something... The Knicks should do. What I'm saying, though, is that what you're banking, what you're alluding to, is that they have to bank on the players that they have now, and the players they can possibly draft to become to form forming a team. And that's that's a lot of luck right there. That's a game of roulette because it's not an exact science. If we take well, it's not an exact science. And also, let's take a look at the history of the Knicks and their drafting. I mean, they've only drafted well. They've always, I think, you know what, even with late picks and before Phil came, before Phil came and picked up, you know, the international players, the Knicks did very well picking talent from the D-League and also late second rounders. And they all traded them away. And some of them became decent and others kind of flamed out. But Yeah, what happened they, to your boy Jorts, man? We need Jorts back on the team. We, we're missing that energy from Jorts. I mean, Shane Larkin's back from Jeez. China. Shout out to Josh Harrelson, man. But let's focus at the, at the story at hand. You can either bank on your next few draft picks being a player like Kyrie Irving at the point guard position. Frank could possibly be that player. The jury still remains out on him. But at the end of the day, you are gambling there 100%. And we do have the next three number one picks, 18, 19, and 20, at our disposal to possibly pick up some talent, which I'm all for. That, but, that, that's my thing. That, that's my point. Agreed. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. But to believe that those three have the possibility of becoming what Kyrie Irving is now, the it's odds... A gamble. Be, it, it is a gamble. It's a calculated risk. 
but Kyrie Irving right now is 25 years old. He's been to the finals three times. He has a ring. He plays a point guard position. He's easily a top 15 player, maybe sneaks into the top 10 in the entire league. All NBA player, all star, averaged 25 points during the season, added 25 points during the playoffs. He would come to the Knicks, be the de facto leader, and have the opportunity to win in his backyard. He's from Jersey. He went to high school in Jersey. He's a local kid. He went to Duke, rookie of the year, first round draft pick number one. You're assuming that the next three picks, and if we only have to give away one, are going to become the pedigree of Kyrie Irving. And I think that 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 making that move right now would behoove the Knicks because if they tell us, well, because here's the situation. Carmelo Anthony makes 28 million, 25 million roughly. If you're looking at Kyrie, he makes about 18, 19 roughly. So those salaries don't match up. We're going to have to take in more. And my trade scenario, as I told you earlier, was let's take Channing Frye, Kyrie Irving, Carmelo Anthony, and next year's first round draft pick, and you have a deal. I mean, that's that sounds like a decent deal. Don't get me wrong. But I, I still think it's going to take at least Frank and a pick, maybe Frank and two picks, or at least two first round picks. And if you think about it, how we got here... Much. With this mellow much. situation, we gave up to, we mortgaged the future to get a player here that only, that that either got us in a lateral move or a quick dissension. And it brought, it got us absolutely nowhere. If you, if you trick, forget mellow, because we, we already know Mello, mellow's as good as gone. He's gone, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Mellow's gone. You get rid of. Um, uh, maybe next year's pick and maybe the 2020 pick or maybe you get rid of, rid of Frank. Okay, you bring Kyrie here. You put him with Porzingis. What more What more do you have? You have Kyrie locked in a deal until 2019. You have Tim Hardaway Jr. locked in at 71 million. You have almost $130 million locked in between Tim Hardaway Jr. and Joe Kim Noah for at least the next three, four years. Okay, so what... Where do you go? It's it's again. It's another lateral move or going down. Because this is why see, the, Knick, the Knicks the, cannot afford to gamble. Like I said, it has to be a strategic move. It has no to be a strategic it. move. It has to be a strategic move. And, no, and don't no, get me no wrong. About yeah, we understand that the draft is not an exact science. You you can go through a hundred straight years of a draft and maybe not get it right not one time. Look at the Minnesota no doubt about Timberwolves. It. Look at it, you know. Look how long it took Golden State just just to get it right. No so, doubt about it. No doubt about it. Agreed. So, so we understand that that it's a gamble on both ends. But if I were Knicks fans and if I were the Knicks, I would be cautious. This could be another fool's gold, man. Yes, it'll satisfy our needs for competitive basketball at the Garden night in and night out. If you look at it year over year, it may not be that bright for us. So I'd be very careful about that trade. You're not going to only, you can't win without veterans. And you're not going to win without stars. You it's have a star-driven league. This is a star-driven league. Star-driven league, even more so now than it ever was in NBA history, in my opinion. Yeah. And my point is, you probably you could have a better chance of obtaining that one game-changing star, or maybe two, or maybe three, but through the draft and through youth and building consistency year over year. It's a star-driven league, and you're not going to win, and you're not going to get two stars solely on these draft picks in the next three years. I will guarantee you that, for fact. It's it's it Just look at the history of, of draft picks and how they shape to a team. Is it possible? Well, no doubt about it, but I'd say no. The Knicks have been drafted poorly in history thus far, especially at the point guard position. I'm not saying Frank... We're, we're, I'm sold on Frank. I'm also not saying we can't throw the kid. I like Frank, and he needs that vet presence. We haven't even seen what he could do. I, you know, again, I'm not but, saying but, I'm not, so, I have nothing you against know, the he, kid. He started behind the eight ball in summer league. Everybody watching Dennis Smith Jr. and Lonzo, and everybody lighted up, and we like, damn, we should have picked this kid, Dennis Smith Jr. So Frank is behind the eight ball with well, the injury in summer league. Records, but. He, phew, there you go. So, but I still reserve judgment. Until I see him play. He's only 18 years old. Keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Secondly, we need defense, man. Don't forget. Defense. Yes, need stars. That's true. But uh, stars yeah, yeah. that also that play defense. So, again, keep that in mind. Kyrie's a good name at the Garden on the marquee. 
but over the long term, I would be very careful about trying to make a deal with him. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not throwing the house for Kyrie Irving. If if we can get one first round draft pick, Carmelo Anthony out of here, I'm all for it. I, I, I don't think he's worth two round, two first rounders and Carmelo. I think that's too much at this point. But again, we don't have a point guard, and we're beginning to forget that we have a core of Willie Hernan Gomez, Chris Apps Corzingis, and Tim Hardaway Jr. If you add Kyrie Irving to that mix now, you have immediate vet leadership on that team because aside from Joakim Noah and Courtney Lee, maybe, there really isn't any. And you have the opportunity to prove to the NBA that the nonsense that's happened the past four years is over. There's a player of Kyrie's caliber wants to come and play in New York in the bright lights after the turmoil that's happened and he has the possibility of attracting free agents I hear that I hear that better than better than any Carmelo has because it, Listen, no one's really even it's, clamored it's to play bro- with it's Melo. the broken record man how many times have you here oh if we get this guy he's gonna bring this guy if we get this guy he's gonna bring this guy it's the broken record man it is it's a heavy gamble to say all right, let's give up some of our youth and bring Kyrie here. I just feel like we're walking down that same slippery slope, man. That's just going to have us five years later trying to pick up the pieces and patching guys here, patching guys there, because you have to work around contracts like a Noah deal or the Tim Hardaway Jr. deal. And then you got to re-up KP. Listen Who's to- running? Good point. We have to re-up KP. KP doesn't like the team right now. I mean, if you think about it, yes, the Bill team Jackson. The Phil, Phil left. You have to think about it. But at the end of the day, he knows those cronies are still responsible for running the team that were there last year, even though Phil's gone. So you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. KP can opt out. He, very well, next he, he very well can opt out. He could, he could kind of just go, you know what? You guys haven't really showed me anything. I'm in my fourth year. We're lottery bound again after we signed Tim Hardaway. And we got other, you know, whatever pieces we accumulate because and then you're, you have to and also you have to be comfortable with Ron Baker or Frank running the point next year to start. I'm fine with that because we need to bottom out. The, the goal is to bottom out, lose, get these ping pong balls and you got to shoot for the moon. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to take that gamble. Let, if, let Ron Baker the gamble. The, the, so you're. You're willing to take the gamble that if the Knicks come put up another morbid season, which they very well can do again, given the roster of the make out of this make out of this season as far. Okay, no problem. Okay. 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 What if you trade for Kyrie? It'd be great. Why? Well, not not if you lose the picks, it'd give us another option. Give us another option. Give us the other option. To, we to, to pick to, free agency and use the draft. To, to By to that have, time, two years in, you have Frank. Frank will be two year a two year vet at that time. We still don't know what the jury's out on Frank. What if he turns out to be that player? We can we can. It's not a. It's a, he's, a, he's a UFA in two years. And yeah. also at the same time, you're getting Kyrie Irving for eighteen and twenty million dollars per right. year. Right, but we don't we don't know if Frank is in the deal. I mean, right now I've heard that the Knicks could be in, in talks between the Cavs and the Suns and trying to swing a three way deal. Um, I, I'm hearing Eric Bledsoe, Tyson Chandler could be involved, and maybe Frank going to Phoenix in, in that sort of deal for for Kyrie. So, in addition to the Knicks, um, I believe it's 2019, 2021 picks or 2018, 2020. Obviously, you can't trade first round picks, uh, lottery unprotected picks, three years in a row. So. It'll be every other year type of situation. I, I see uh, a tweet today, Jake Brown Radio. Knicks get Kyrie Channing, Cavs get Mello, 2018 first rounder. Eric Bledsoe, Suns get Tristan Thompson. Uh, right. I like that deal. That's a good deal. Ky- Kyrie and Channing to the Knicks. Cavs get Mello in our first rounder next year. And Eric Bledsoe. Suns get Tristan Thompson. At the end of the day, folks, will the Knicks ultimately get Kyrie Irving? 
for some strange season, my God, I think the Knicks do get him. Um, I just do hope it's not for two first rounders. If the Knicks lose two first rounders in any part of this trade, I, I'm going to have to disagree with it at the end of the day. But I have this fleeting feeling, fleeting feeling rather that the, the Knicks are going to obtain Kyrie Irving before the start of the next season. What do you think? I mean, one thing about Knicks fans is one thing we're good at is dreaming. I think he goes to Minnesota, or I think the snake Pat Riley finds a way like he always does. I just, I don't, I don't think it's in the cards for us, and I don't think we should give up that much for him either. So, if he comes, he comes. If he goes. It'll still be one hell of an NBA offseason, I'll tell you that. Which brings us to the question of the day, Knicks fans. Should we mortgage some of our future to get Kyrie Irving? Weigh in below in the comment section. Let's get this debate going. You've obviously heard both sides. It's an interesting topic. Another interesting week. Let's see what next week holds. But until then, again, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button below. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, at Knicks Fan TV. Until next time, peace. Peace.